from and all, all the rest of it. I'm Councillor Jake Morrison for Wave Watch Awards in Liverpool. OK, an historic day for Liverpool Council, but more importantly for yourself, Jake, how are you feeling? Yeah, uh, I feel excited, uh, you know, for the challenge that faces me ahead. Uh, I'm just grateful for the uh, trust that residents have put in me by voting for me and I feel privileged to represent them in the council chamber. So You sound like a politician already, <laughs> mate. Come on, tell us how you're really feeling. Uh, delighted. I feel delighted. I haven't slept yet, so uh, still taking it all in, but just signed in with the chief executive, so it's all official now. Uh, um, you weren't entitled to vote at the last election. You're, th you're that young. Yeah, yeah, I was 18 last September, so I was selected um, just then, as I turned 18, uh, and I was officially allowed to vote this year. So, And, um, I mean, just sum up to us, I mean, have you always wanted to be a councillor, wanted to be a politician? Uh, I've always been interested in the political world. Uh, I joined a shadow uh, councillor scheme about two years ago, which was um, run by Joe Anderson and Alan Dean. Um, so I started to see what they were doing and I found it was interesting. Campaign for Luciana Berger at the last general election and thought it was something I wanted to do. So, Why? Why politics? Because so many of young people, so many of your peers would seem disinterested in politics these yeah. days. Well, I work in the NHS full time, so I've got like a caring background. But in the NHS, you're dealing with the immediate problem. Whereas as a council, you're dealing with people's uh, lives day in, day out, you know, changing the whole atmosphere of how people live. And that's what I enjoy doing, so... How much do you think your victory was a backlash, was about you or a backlash against the coalition and the Lib Dems in particular? It was definitely a backlash uh, against the coalition. Uh, it was a strong message to Nick Clegg from the residents of Liverpool, especially Wavertree uh, for electing me. Um, it just proves that the residents of Liverpool are, are not happy with what the coalition are doing and with what Nick Clegg's doing in particular, going against all his promises that he said, for example, you know, the tripling of tuition fees or removing the EMA, uh, you know, the 91 million council cuts that we've got here in the city, it's just not on, so. And, I mean, you, you've ousted a, a very, very, um, you know, um, well-respected, uh, long-standing councillor, a Lib Dem peer. Yeah. I mean, it just goes to show the gravity of the yeah, situation for the Lib Dems. It does. For the, for the last 10 months, that's the response we've been getting. Um, but, you know, yesterday the result was officially announced and and um, he lost his seat and, and that should be the message to Nick Clegg. He should see that one of his highest profile um, Lib Dem councillors is now gone and, and that he needs to change what they're doing in government. So, Do you think, I mean, it, this is no disrespect to you, yeah. but if you think they put up a gnome in Wavertree for Labour, the, you would've, <laughs> they would have won? Uh, no, I don't believe so, because we have campaigned for the last 10 months. I've uh, been knocking on doors every single week, every single weekend. We've got a record of dealing with people's problems. Uh, residents, the amount of support we had from residents in this election, a lot of people were surprised. We had a lot of councillors, MPs, from, you know, Andrew Eagle come from Wallasey to come down and help. We've had all that support, we've done all the work, but the coalition government pushed them over the edge. So. When you were knocking on doors, could people quite take it in that you were the, the candidate because of your age? Uh, there was some surprise faces. Uh, the first one I ever encountered was uh, a lady said, I've got fish fingers in my freezer that are older than you. Uh, but thankfully, she, she's still voting for me. So, um, you know, we just get on with it. And, and they believe that, you know, I got uh, 2,300 votes. So that was a, a vote of, of trust and confidence in me to represent them for the next four years. And that's what I'll do. So. And how important do you think it is for you to be representing a new generation? Because so many councillors yeah. are of the same ilk, <laughs> middle-aged, grey-suited, yeah. white, from a, you know that type of background. Well, I won't make any comment on that, but um, definitely um, I'll be proud to, to represent some of the young people who can't speak up for themselves in, in the city, and I'm happy to, to listen to any of their views. So, What do you think you can bring to politics? Uh, a new outlook, you know, I've just, just grew up uh, myself, you know, I'm now 18, so I've just been through the education system, the youth services, all that sort of stuff that's got a, an impact on what's going on at the moment, and I think I can influence that, so that's what we're going to do. What's your ultimate ambition, mate? Uh, just to carry on and see where, where this all takes me, really, you know. Uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge and, and see where we end up, so. Do you think it's necessarily good, though, that we have such a strong... Um, one-sided council. Do you think a, a bit more balance would represent the views like we, like we might get with AV? If, if we've got effective members in our, our, our group, which we have, um, we, can, we can work together in, in our private group meetings and decide what, what we need to be doing, you know, working in opposition together as a team. And I think we can be effective and, and the already have for the last year. So we'll continue to do that. Fantastic. Well, thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.